Hey folks, this is the weapon guide devoted to the hatchets. So hatchets, in my opinion, are most oftentimes misunderstood. They're pretty much just written off as just, oh, it's just the weapon that throws. And yes, it absolutely does do that. I mean, that is one of the cool things about the hatchets and makes it impressively unique with all sorts of different abilities. But the trouble is going to be when to use each of these throws and how to manage them on top of the other moves that Hatchet has, such as this, which is super cool, or this, and it's confusing. But, in my opinion, the Hatchets is pretty much a really good weapon for hit and run sorts of playstyles. You have really hard hitting abilities such as Grease Lightning, as you can see on the corner, but Here's an ability that I think really encapsulate, in my opinion, the core identity of the hatchet. So Wild Surge 2 basically turns one of your throws into in a way to re-engage with your opponent and mercilessly punish them. It's so good. It's so good. So that's kind of how I want you to think of the hatchets is a hit and run sort of thing. When you're in close range, you can do some crazy power moves such as Grease Lightning. It packs a punch at close range, but hey, you want to disengage, then you can back out with abilities such as Boulder Breaker, or if you're at range, you can throw things at range with abilities like Piercing Hurl, and then you can re-engage with things like Wild Surge 2, and I think this, this ability alone is just absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, there are all sorts of other tools that seem rather wonky and maybe perhaps situational, but again, Hatchet is king at adapting to many situations because of its unique features such as Eagle Shadow. It may look a little weird like hey you throw a hatchet up and then I guess you know you can move around while the hatchet's doing its own thing which is cool but it's like hey it's kind of slow right? But it's a very unique ability and it can hit all sorts of enemies that are like a level or two above you and so it it can help set things up and so there's like a lot of unique applications to it and that's what the hatchets has in terms of its flexibility there's a lot of unique tools i mean biting hail is just you do an attack while you're dodging it's one of the few weapons that allows this you've got abilities that can allow you to hop over opponents so it's it's tricky and then on top of that you've got um, death from above which is one of the triangle enders you've got a uh, bell ringer which is yet another one and then you've got oh not dual hawks uh where's mountain hawk there you got mountain hawk which is yet another one and so this is just remit stance alone and then if we look at skill customization tab we've got just quite a lot of different things that we have to mess around with so let me again just illustrate the value of the hit and run style and I'll just demonstrate this against an opponent without talking too much about what's going on, just so that you can see what is really possible with a weapon like this. Oh, it would have helped if I pulled that off. Some cool stuff right there, right? And you may not even have thought that was possible. Oh, of course I got hit. Of course I got hit, right? Whatever, I'll just give him the good ol' Epon. Yeah, get out of here. I was trying to show off. It didn't work. But hopefully you saw some stuff and you're like, whoa, wait, hatchets can do that? I'm like, yep, they absolutely can. So let's talk about what kind of went on there. Let's begin discussion with Wild Surge 2, which again is the skill that I pretty much have praised quite unilaterally, I might add. This turns all sorts of abilities, your primary throws, piercing hurl, dual hurl, chain hurl, or boulder breaker to allow you to close the distance between you and your enemy. So the main hatchet throws are as follows. So let me get rid of my controller feed just for while I discuss this. So the main hatchet throws are as follows. You have piercing hurl light, which is just a quicker charge of it, and then piercing hurl shadow. Basically, if you want to pierce an enemy, I mean, just use either one. Um, shadow will allow you to do it from much farther away which is awesome, but it's not as quick of a charge as Piercing Hurl Light. I tend to play a little more close range with the hatchets as opposed to being far away, but it's still really, really good. I mean, being able to throw that much further away is pretty remarkable. And so 
Range is never something you should underestimate and Hatchets has exactly that. It has all the range at its disposal and uh, momentarily, uh, right after I talk about the throws, I'll show you just like one ability. If you just want to spam it, you can basically do it forever. And then I'll talk about um, some things that you can do with that, which can make things pretty nutty. One of the other major throws that Hatchet has, aside from the high stance piercing hurl, which is pretty much just a damage dealer of sorts, uh, but still really cool, is dual hurl. Um, you can just use it to hit potentially two targets from far away, far away yet again. Um, enemies that have larger hitboxes, well, this takes advantage of that. And it's pretty cool. And then keep in mind, you can sequence this into Wild Surge, which is awesome. Like, engage it far away and you're good to go. Uh, there's, of course, the flashy Deadly Spiral, which is just this awesome ability on its own. Definitely a lot of fun. Uh, and then you've got Chain Hurl. Which, yeah, sure, the, it's a little wonkier because you're kind of throwing them on the ground and it can kind of miss at times, but you can keep an enemy almost repeatedly staggered with it. Just, well, hit stun at least, and I wouldn't say stagger. But you can just keep them locked in place. Let me get my controller feed back up just to demonstrate this. Against just a human opponent. Just to show you what's possible. Alright, come on. I mean, I can do this as long as I have key, right? And now with Wild Search 2, I can just go back in, which is really, really cool. I can do a piercing hurl and then go in. Like, that's really ridiculous. I have Deadly Spiral on mid stance, so I can't do it with that. But I can do it. I can do it with Boulder Breaker. Oh, come on. Really neat, huh? For real? Really? Okay, dude, you're, you're done. You're, you're retired. You're done. But yeah, just having that capability of being able to lock an opponent in place is super awesome. So you can turn your ranged attacks, the major ones anyway, into pressure plays, and that's what makes it so good. You may be wondering, hey, how does it function against Yokai? Well, you can't necessarily get that cool knockback per se, but again, being at range and doing a modest amount of key damage is pretty good. That's... Oh, I even broke a horn. Nice. Did a pretty good amount of key damage. No complaints from me. But let me now talk about one of the other abilities that can basically just keep an opponent at bay, like, permanently. Like, no joke. So, that ability is Advance... Oh, not Arise. Advancing Storm. So, uh, let me show that to you. Advancing Storm is this. You just throw hatchets. And you can just move around. Now, even though the tooltip suggests that running, it implies like a sprinting, basically all you gotta do is just move around and just hold square. So you don't have to sprint and then do it. You just... You can see my controller feed. Literally just moving around. Hold square. And you can flux to after it. So let me demonstrate how silly it can be. You just stay at range. Stay at range. That's the operative word. Stay at range, man. Okay. You can legitimately just spam this over and over and over again. Just stay at range. And enemies can't touch you. Not the most exciting. You just keep, But you can keep your distance. At all times. Without getting hit. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, one of the most powerful builds for the game actually is a critical hatchets build where you just spam advancing storm and that's it. And it works because if you're not going to get hit, you basically have negated the biggest risks of a critical build, which is dying really quickly. So yeah, you could do this. But naturally, I imagine you probably want to do much more than that than just spam one skill, which is why you're here, which is why the earlier parts are cooler, but Advancing Storm is certainly an awesome trait. It kind of help you fill in the gaps, and it's a good amount of damage, and it's pretty quick, and you can flux too, and you basically don't ever have to worry about key if you can do just that. So yeah, definitely worth using, but let's get on to the other things.
So let's see, what's next? Uh, when it comes to Mystic Arts, either one's pretty cool. They don't necessarily, uh, in my opinion, really tell you how to work with the weapon. Like, sure, you've got Train Throw, which assists you with, I guess, doing more damage with Charge Throw timing, which is great, which which does help. And then there's Tireless Throw, which makes it so that you don't, your ranged attacks for the hatchets basically don't suffer a distance penalty, which is great, which is why I use it, so I don't have to worry about damage fall off. But again, it doesn't really work with the whole hit and run style I've been talking about. Even the passives are like pretty generic. It's damage from behind, grapple damage, uh, take less damage. But none of the critical damage buffs and debuffs and sorry, the buffs and whatever that you get. And they're kind of shared with all weapons. So again, you can't really get too much information from the hatchet passives. Kind of have to look at the skills, which is why I'm doing that. And... As I was saying, there this weapon really is, in my opinion, the epitome of hit and run tactics. You've got moves like Lethal Barrage, which really pack a punch, especially with Lethal Barrage 2. You've got um, Demon Undercut, which really works as a great key damage tool. And again, now that you've been introduced to the whole Wild Surge thing, now you're like, okay, so I can kind of hit and run, but what about using all these awkward other abilities? So let's begin with High Stance Talk. And how to work with it just with the skills there's a lot of tech when it comes to the hatchets but when it comes to the skills like lethal barrage it's just as you might think it is all right it's really a heavy hitter move the heavy hitter move in close range it completely shredded his key it has a bit of a timing element to it it's really not that bad it's just wait until the triangle evaporates sorry not the triangle evaporates <laughs> I need to break that down after I kill this guy. But you just like wait a split sec. Okay, so let me break that down in case you're curious about the timing because I've whiffed it. So you hold triangle, wait a brief moment, and then press square. It's that simple. Don't try to like spam it. Oh, I guess that worked. Okay, maybe that works! But yeah, just before the key pulse window evaporates, I think. Yeah, do it before the key pulse window evaporates. And then you got it. And it's a real heavy hitting attack. So when you're in close range, use that to pack a punch. That much is obvious. What about the other skills? Demon Undercut. Bit of a long animation, but it does a whopping amount of key damage, which is why... I gave it even more key damage, cause what's not to love? So when you're in close range... Boom! Look at that key damage, what the crap! That's a lot of key damage, man. I mean, seriously. Don't underestimate it. Look at half the key bar, dude. Oh yeah, well that's also with Masterful Slice. Hey, no. And it is, it does take a bit of time to rev up. But... There are many moments you can get away with it, and again, the aspect of range... Never something to be underestimated. So you don't necessarily have to play like super duper close range, you can. And unfortunately it can whiff if they're a little too far away. But just reasonably close range and you'll get it. Requires a bit of setup, but boy is there a massive payoff. Or I can just move <laughs> and destroy his key. So try to use Demon Undercut in that regard. Alright, major key damage deal there. Next ability, which is admittedly a little wonky. Dragonfly. This ability doesn't really do that much damage, but it keeps targets in place. And why is this awesome? I admittedly don't use it that much, but why is this awesome? Because keeping a target in place means they can't get to you. So you can spam stuff. So remember I was talking about advancing storm stuff? You're worried about a target getting too close to you? Not anymore. Its ability to keep targets in place really allows you to set things up 
like that soul core. So not to be underestimated. So yeah, pretty sick. You can also charge it up. The key pulse window is a little weird. But again, if a target can't get to you, they're as good as useless. If they can't hurt you, it doesn't matter how long it takes to kill them, you're gonna win pretty much all the time, unless you just die of boredom. So yeah, Dragonfly is very good for all sorts of setups. Hatchets is really good for all sorts of setups. Alright, we just die, dude. And so you need to bear that in mind. There's a lot of cool stylish things you can do with this. But let's get on to another ability. Um, Breach Lightning is very much just a power play. It's really powerful. Like, really freaking powerful, particularly on enemies that are out of key or prone or just in a state to get extra damage and stuff. So, you don't necessarily have to go for the full charge. You can just do a quick charge for a little bit of interrupt and damage. It does a surprising amount of break damage as well. But of course, full charge just feels so satisfying to nail. You can sheep cancel it. I am getting hit. This is a great demonstration of hatchet power. So sometimes I just like to throw it out willy nilly. But it hurts. Alright, see if I can get the hits. Alright, let's try now. A lot of damage compared to the other hits. So Grease Lightning is very much a, a massive power play. You don't have to go for the full charge unless you want to go for the super damage. You can just quick fire it for two quick hits, which is great. So yeah, I think of I think of high stance as the super damage spot when it comes to hatchets, but it's really good to pack things in a punch and just like smash enemies to bits. And it feels so satisfying to get like a fully charged Grease Lightning um, or getting Lethal Barrage 2 off. Those are exquisite abilities. Let's get on. I'm going to actually avoid Miss Stance for right now. I'm going to go on to Low Stance because Low Stance can be pretty confusing as well. So Spinning Crab is just your... It's just kind of a... It's kind of weird to, for many players because it has sort of a long animation for Low Stance stuff. But one thing you may not realize or perhaps may not, uh, I guess, credit enough is the fact that... You get quite a lot of motion with it too. So it can be really handy to not only... Well, it, it's pretty good in the key damage department, but the fact that you can kind of catch up to your opponents is pretty awesome. As so you can see, the key damage ain't something that's minimal. It's a pretty good amount of key damage actually. Oh, I actually broke the horn somehow. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. There are many opponents that can't really deal with, I guess, being followed. And so having all those various hits and all that extra tracking really does help when it comes to opponents that are trying to back away. And against humans, there is an extra property that it has um, if they are low on key. Oh, that's pretty handy. Let me get them out of key. Come on. It can trip them too, so you can get a final blow, which is awesome. Try it again. Sweet. So yeah, I like it. It's just nice, good old reliable. Again, it really facilitates the whole, you're, you're in close range, want to pack a punch. But what else? What about some of the other wonkier abilities? Uh, Boulder Breaker, I, I guess I'll talk about Boulder Breaker. Boulder Breaker is super awesome. Probably one of my favorite hatchet abilities alone. So the tooltip suggests that you gotta do full charge to get maximum distance. That is not the case. You can do a quick charge and get the distance. So if an enemy is just about to hit you and you just wanna back out, use Boulder Breaker. Just quick fire it. All that changes with a full charge is simply gonna be damage. All right, quick fire. Less damage, but utility is gonna stay exactly the same. And you see, I could even spam this for ages and then go into Wild Search 2 and there's like nothing he can do about it. Try to hit me. Try to hit me, man. Can't touch this. Come on. So yeah, I love quick firing it and then going in for a Wild Search 2. It's so good. Whoa. Hey, nice try. Hey. 
Okay, nice try. Oh, okay, baby. Uh, you got me. <laughs> I screwed up there. <laughs> okay. Try, try it again. Try it again. Try it again. It's cool. Oh, okay. Well, it, it, I, I, it, it worked. Okay. We'll just, we'll just say uh, it worked. So what's next? Holy cow! There's a lot to cover. So, Biting Hail is pretty unique. It's just, hey, want to avoid an attack and do a throw at the same time? Great. Doesn't matter which direction you're dodging. It may eat up a lot of key, but being able to attack an enemy at range is always nice. Even if it doesn't do the most damage, there's still a little hit stun from time to time. Oh, you want to hit me? Try to hit me, try to hit me. Ah, uh -huh. try to hit me. Can't hit me. Still can't hit me. Okay, well, I'm going in. No, I'm not. Okay, now I'm going in. Hey, can, can you get me? Alright, well, it's my turn now. No, it's not. Just kidding. Okay, I'm gonna kill you. Okay, you're dead. Gotta play hatchets like that. Just hit and run, tease your enemies. It helps. But there's still a lot. Uh, so yeah, Biting, uh, Biting Hill helps with that. I'll have to cover Mountain Climber a little later. I'm gonna talk about some things that have what you might think are a timing element, such as Dual Hawks. And then I'm probably gonna have to leave some of these things for another video because I could be here for quite literally an hour. There's so much crazy tech with this. So, Dual Hawks. Dual Hawks is also a power play, very dazzling to look at, and it suggests there is a timing element in the tooltip, all right? Because there is a difference between pressing triangle at the wrong time, because you just see the hatches kind of swirl around you, versus, say, doing it at the right time. And you may be wondering, what the heck's the right time? And I'm just going to tell you something that's just going to make your life easier. Don't worry about timing whatsoever. You can legitimately mash the triangle and get the throw off, which does a whopping amount of damage. I want to demonstrate this really quick. All right, normal. All right, kind of weak. Kind of forgettable, right? It did a ton more damage, didn't it? Significantly more damage if you get the correct timing. And it does a good amount of key damage as well. Aww. Yeah, don't worry about the timing whatsoever. You can legitimately just mash it and you'll get it. It's not like Beyond Infinity where it matters. It's just go ahead. Mash the button, you'll get it. Or if you just want to do a correct hit, there is a timing element to it. Kind of just want to mash it so that your triangle then connects just as the actual hit will go off. It looks like a baseball bat swing. That takes some practice, but you don't need to practice. You can just mash. Cool, huh? And there's no penalty to it. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Let's see if there's anything else I guess I can cover real quick because I know if I talk about extra stuff it's just gonna make this run time for like 40 years. <laughs> but yeah, I think I... let's see. I'll just show you what we've worked with so far to kind of illustrate the raw power of it. I'm not gonna try to use anything I've been... that I haven't discussed. Basically showing you how untouchable I am. And you're gonna die? Super dead. Just that alone makes you a powerhouse when it comes to the hatchet. So just try those concepts. My advice, if anything, would be really spend your time getting comfortable with Wild Surge 2 because that just makes the hatchets feel so good. There's actually some tech that I have neglected to mention in this video, but I will in the follow-up one. That's gonna show you some really cool things involving other moves and other crazy tech involving the hatchets and you can use wild surge too and so that just helps this weapon feel so good but even just those things alone should kind of help make it clear that the hatchets it's not just only a throw weapon there's a lot of utility to those throws and knowing when to use them and how to use them can make all the difference in terms of your ability not only to murder your opponents but murder them with style and with speed 
they'll work with that. Again, Wild Search 2, in my opinion, encapsulate the core identity of the hatchets, which is very much a powerful hit and run sort of play style. You need to pack a punch close range? Do it, absolutely, with abilities like Grease Lightning or with abilities like Lethal Barrage 2, which feels so good to pull off. But you need to disengage, you can quick fire Boulder Breaker. All right, and then you want to go back in, well then do Wild Surge 2, as suggested by this tooltip, to keep that action going and keep your enemies guessing. You'll find many moments in which enemies will try to hit you, and then you'll just avoid it because you're at range, or you backed off at the right time. And it just feels so good to punish them, oh my god. So yeah, try that out on for size. But when we get back with another hatchets guide, you'll just see so much more, which will help the weapon feel so much more complete to you. But yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.